What's up guys, my name is Josh. These are the Meze 99 Classics, the epitome of a punchy headphone. That's exactly what this headphone is, just super punchy, uh, super mid-bass focused headphone. Uh, a lot of fun, kind of what I would determine to be like a fashion can. That's really what this is, like a fashion-y headphone. It does sound good, it sounds fun, it's enjoyable to listen to, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and break down the build, the sound quality, the power requirements that you need for this, and finally, the conclusion. Now, real quick, to be completely transparent, Meze did send this out for a review. They have not asked or paid for me to say anything good or bad about this headphone, so all thoughts and opinions are my own. Let's get started. The build is lighter than I expected, actually. I thought they were gonna be quite heavy. Uh, this wood, it is real wood. It's not as dense as I thought it would be. Now, I, th I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, it just kind of feels Feels nice in the hand. Um, the hinges are kind of loose, but overall they don't feel like too uh, cartoonish, I guess, if that's even a word. Uh, good headband strap, like it's nice and thick. Um, it's obviously pretty thick in terms of the width, uh, but also the depth of it is nice and thick. It's got spring steel for the headband. The headband strap is adjustable with these little elastic straps. I actually really like the system. The headphone seals really well. The pads are comfortable and overall lightweight design, dual connectors on both sides. Now, overall, I'm really impressed with the build here. There are only two issues that I have with the build. Uh, one is going to be that with the exception of the 99 classic symbol, on the top of your head, which I'm still not even sure if you're supposed to be reading it like this to where it's right side up, or if you're supposed to leave it like that, I don't know. Anyways, there's no distinguishable right and left on the actual ear cups themselves. The only thing that distinguishes right and left is the cables that you get with it, which are proprietary to this. Um, you're gonna have a hard time finding uh, 3.5 millimeters that will actually fit in here. It's not gonna be impossible, but it is gonna be something that you're gonna have to look into because that 3.5 that they use, is very, very skinny. Now that has a right and left connector and whichever side you plug into the right and left is going to then become the right and left. So this is pretty much an ambidextrous design. It fits the same way both ways. It's comfortable either way. It's exactly the same. What I recommend doing is putting some sort of tape or coloration on the right side and the left side something that you're familiar with, like red and blue. And that way, at a glance, you can just tell which side is right, which side is the left, without having to search for the cable for the little tiny R mark and the little tiny L mark. Now, the second complaint I have about the build, which, oddly enough, only was an issue for one day of my testing. Throughout the, all the other days, it seemed to be okay. But these got kind of hot on one particular day. So it's winter here, gets hot in winter. It's probably definitely gonna get hot in summer. Now, closing statements about the build. I am usually not a fan of gold but I actually really dig the gold accents on this headphone. I think that the polish of it is done so well that it actually looks really, really clean. You know, obviously this is gonna be personal preference. What you may like, I don't. And what I may like, you don't. But uh, this is a design that I actually find to be really nice looking. I, I think it's pleasing to the eye. I don't think it looks gaudy in any way. And it's a headphone that fits well enough and I, you know, looks nice enough to where I would definitely wouldn't be ashamed to go out in public with it and it, it looks pretty cool. I think you'd get a lot of questions um, and a lot of compliments on the build of this. So now the power requirements for this. 32 ohms at 103 decibels of sensitivity. So a very efficient headphone. It's obviously made for mobile use. And because of that level of efficiency and the compacted design and being closed back, I actually recommend this for something like a travel headphone, something to go on airplanes with, something to go to work with, something like that. If you're looking for something beautiful in this price range, close back, efficient, you can run it off of anything, that's gonna be what this headphone is for, if you like the sound signature. Speaking of that sound signature, what is it? Well, like I said, punchy. Like, that's the main staple of the sound here. And by punchy, I mean like a lot of, a lot of bass between about 75 hertz to 120 hertz. It gives that, that really visceral feeling to where like impacts feel really, really intense. And you know, explosions, movies, gaming, very, very fun and enjoyable to listen to. Not necessarily the most technical headphone in the world, uh, pretty far shot from that, but definitely a fun headphone. Okay, so let's talk about the treble. So the treble is very, very recessed. Um, it's not gonna be fatiguing. It's obviously not sibilant at all. Nobody's ever gonna have any issues with the treble volume on this or the brightness of the treble. That's not gonna be a thing that anybody would complain about. 
However, I would say that, you know, if, it, if it we're going to be for a more analytical sound, which I don't think is what it's going for, it would have to be a little bit more boosted in the treble response. It's pretty recessed there. You're not gonna be getting a whole lot of finite little details that are gonna be coming up to the foreground like you would on a more, let's call it high fidelity headphone. Now that being said, it's not completely devoid of detail. It's just a matter of volume and how pressed towards you those details are. Um, and another thing is, you know, because this is something that I would use for travel or work, this is an extended listening type of headphone. This is something that I would put on for, you know, three to four hours if I was editing or if I was on a plane, something like that. And when you're listening for that long, in my experience, usually it's not great to have a super bright, super clinical headphone anyways. So, so this is definitely going to be more for your relaxing, pure enjoyment standpoint. That's really what this is for. Now, the mid-range. The mid-range is something that is okay. I mean, the vocals have good tonality to them. They're not extremely textured or anything like that. Again, not a super clinical headphone. Um, the separation is okay, not class leading, but not poor. You know, it's not giving you HD 650 vocals or anything like that, but it's definitely not something that you would put on and, and think that it was devoid of any vocal presence. So, bass response, right? That's this headphone's forte. That's what it does. How does it sound? Well, again, we've gone over the punchy thing. Sub bass is real in this headphone, like really, really strong. You're hearing down to like 30 Hertz without any issues whatsoever. Now the most present frequency range in this headphone is gonna be about 30 Hertz to about 200 Hertz. And that's really gonna make up the majority of your sound uh, experience. When you're playing a game, you're really gonna feel the movement, you're really gonna feel the explosions, you're gonna feel the gunshots, you're gonna feel like the body of the sound. And that may be what you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for a clinical analytical headphone, you know, an audio file or a classic audio file sound, not going to be your thing. But if you're looking for something punchy and fun, and you know, you're not going to be playing competitively or anything like that for gaming, or you want to watch movies, you want to have kind of a very, you know, bassy kind of classic theater experience at home, it's going to be a great option for that, especially if you need close back. Primarily because the mid race response really, really makes everything seem like super powerful. Like when you're shooting a gun, you're like really shooting a gun. Like it makes even Arma sound like powerful, which is a pretty stark uh, sounding game. Like it doesn't have a lot of bass or a lot of like, uh, you know, body or flavor to the gunshots and explosions. But on this headphone, it starts to creep in quite a bit. So imaging and soundstage, to be completely honest, they're just okay. Um, you know, imaging is kind of, eh, it's all right. Soundstage though is a little weak. Um, you're getting sounds kind of directly in the center of your head and then you're getting sounds on the right and on the left, not far right, not far left, uh, but just kind of generic sounds, I guess. Nothing super well separated here. That's kind of something that I usually find with closed back headphones, so it's a little bit to be expected. And when it's compared to like a, an equally priced open back counterpart, obviously it's not gonna have the soundstage capabilities that something like a, just an average open back headphone at $300 would have. All right, so genre recommendations. I recommend staying away from acoustic. Uh, you know, if it can obviously play it, it, sounds fun, it's enjoyable, but if you really want that that really raw acoustic experience, I would look towards maybe an open back headphone uh, if you're not stuck in the closed back area. What I would recommend for this headphone is rock, because um, rock tends to be very treble intense. For me, it's usually a little bit fatiguing, so having a headphone that has the treble reduction is great. Um, it also makes like drums, you know, kick drums, things like that, uh, bass guitar seem really, really powerful. Uh, R&B, electronic music, rap, anything with a lot of usually bassy frequencies in there, it's gonna be a lot of fun on this headphone. And that word fun is going to lead me into my conclusion. That's all this is, it's a fun headphone. It's not a work headphone, it's not a clinical headphone, it's not a high fidelity headphone, it is a fun, bassy headphone. If you want movies and games to seem powerful, if you wanna rock out to some hardcore electronic music, this is gonna be an awesome choice. If you're looking for something that's beautiful, and close back and easy to drive, you can take them anywhere. Now, eventually we have to face the question of raw value. Is this gonna beat out the sound quality of open back headphones for raw sound quality? No, not at the same price, definitely not. But if you're looking for a fun all-rounder travel headphone that looks beautiful, this is your guy. All right guys, thanks very much for watching. My name is Josh, signing off.